How is life now these days? Life is pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty broke. It drives me crazy that you're broke, and I'll tell you why. It drives you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think it does for me? Because you are a, a true student of boxing. You knew, you know, but you're one of those guys who really understands boxing and where I, boxers I'll come from. Yes, 100%. And so when you look back at boxers, traditionally, They've gotten hosed every step of the way. They generate tremendous amount of income. Forget about what goes on gambling-wise, what they generate and all that. But it seems like every boxer ends up in the hole, always ends up getting beaten down b financially. Well, there's a really small percentage that don't, probably a half percentage that doesn't. Right. But this is, um, listen, when I was a young kid, I heard about um, Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robson. You hear about all these great fighters, Tony Cannon and Larry Luan. You hear about these guys that... Um, Amazing fortunes and lost it and you know this stuff you all know this stuff But they still they knew about the guys before them in the 10th and right. the early century in the 20s But still we go broke you know why because handling money is an art It's it an is. art than handling money and we never practiced that art before does it keep you up at night now? Like knowing how much money you, you probably had personally about 400 million dollars Does it keep you up at night now where you go? fuck Never, yeah, never, never. I never, in my, never once in my life I said, fuck, I just, um, I had everything I ever wanted, and I have everything I wanted now. Yeah. And plus, when I had all that money, I was so living such a chaotic life, I wasn't really enjoying myself. It was better if I was even dead at that time. I remember how shocked I was when Buster Douglas fight happened. This is the, like the you first... You weren't more shocked than I was. Buster's landing these... Oh, nice! I always figured you just didn't want to win that fight. Like, like you'd had enough because, A, you were out of shape for the fight. Yeah. And it was almost like you're like, okay, let me fucking lose this thing already and be done with it. It was almost like committing suicide. Kind of in a way, yes. Because that's why when I, um, when I retired, that was another form of suicide. But it's killing some bad stuff. It's not killing a good person. You're killing the right person. But we don't know how to get the person that we're not supposed to kill out of the body of the guy that we should kill. Yeah, I understand that. that I know you would understand that one. It's like you almost don't know. You know, the money's coming in. You're Mike Tyson, you're this huge success, but meanwhile, you're miserable. You're fucking I'm, miserable. I'm the most miserable person that I've ever met in my life was myself. Right. When I was at that height of fighting and success. Right. Right. So all of a sudden, how do you end all of that in a, in a way? But you keep the good guy alive. Right. You know, um, it, it's all an inside job, man. It takes a long, it takes a long time of therapy, a long time of just um, challenging your decision-making qualities. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes doing this stuff, but um, you have to get it done or it's going to kill you. Does Evander Holyfield, is he a wealthy guy? Did he hold on to his money? No, he was getting foreclosure um, statements. I don't know anything about his financial Are you friendly situation. with him at all now? Very friendly, yeah. You are? Yeah. Does he look at you every time and say, why the fuck did you bite my ear off? No, he never does. Do you have an answer for him? What is the answer? I'm sorry. I'm, fuck, I'm sorry. But that's so not you. You are a fan of boxing, and you are, a, you are an aficionado of boxing. But I wasn't a boxer back then. I was just a guy doing, living my life. Were you scared that high. night? No, I'm never, well, I'm scared every night, but never scared that he's going to beat me up kind of scared. Right. What is that feeling like when you fucking take your fist and you fucking pound someone to the point that they pass out? It's like drugs. Right. It's like drugs. It gives you everything you want. Yes. But it takes back so much more in return. What does it take back? Everything. You your get, soul. Yeah, your spirit. Your soul. How do you, you think about it? How do you... I want to, to take people's nose and stick it in their brain. How do you want to do that if you're humanitarian? How do you want to do that to another human being? Because you want to kill them, right? But that's back then, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, that's back and, then. And so the point is that you really are a sensitive guy inside, and that sensitive guy it was almost like you couldn't let him out or else you wouldn't want to put somebody's yeah. nose into their brain. But yeah. I guess, no, I don't want to hurt any peop anybody no more like that. Hey, did you ever you meet know? Muhammad Ali? Yeah. Was yeah, he the um, greatest of all time? Um, there's no doubt, but not only... It's, I've met Muhammad Ali probably a hundred times, but every time you meet him, it's like the first time. You know there's something special about this gentleman right here. Where do you see him? Where do you, where do you meet with him? First time I met him, I was in Spa for Juvenile Detention Center. I was in, uh, and he came to visit the kids like I do. I come and visit the kids at the hospital. That's crazy. Yeah. Was that like a defining moment in your life? Yeah, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, I didn't know if I wanted to be a boxer, but I knew I wanted to be famous. Right. And you were what, about 13 years old? Probably 11. And you're in the center, and like, look who shows up. It had to be a great day. I mean, you probably didn't have many great days there. 
No, I so. had great days there every day. There was a bunch of kids there. There was a kid, a bunch of kids. We were fighting every day. We were stabbing each other. We were playing basketball. We That's great? Fun. Yeah. It sounds like hell to me. I think you're kidding yourself that that was great. No, not to well, have a family, not to hey, have... Hey, um, listen, um, if you never had it, how, how, how would you know if it was great or bad? Everybody's mother and father was my mother and father. Did you ever and meet I'm, Joe Frazier? Did I? Many times. I fought his son, remember? Right. What a great yeah. fucking guy. Did Marvin. You, did, you love, did you love Joe? I love him so much, but what I love more about Joe than anything than his fighting, that one day I'm in England, I'm doing my meeting and greets, but I'm watching uh, Joe Frazier, they had tape, because he did a meet and greet, and I'm watching the tape, you know, it's just me in the room. Yeah. And I'm watching the tape, and I'm watching how humble he is. Yeah. What's up, man? How you been? What's going on? Been out of trouble? When I saw him, how humble he was, I, I want to be like, you know, even though I said, wow, you never thought such a ferocious fighter. He just takes his head off and he was so humble. I wanted to. God. I always say to Joe, man, you're the real champ. What because a you humble know what, man. What, what Muhammad Ali did to him, I still take umbrage with this. When he would call Joe a gorilla and call him names, mm -hmm. I, I didn't think that was right. Joe was a great champion. He didn't have to go there. I agree with you, but this is something that you have to know. Um, all that stuff is the art of war, too. I know. It's all in the game. Right. That's more enticing than the actual fight. The actual foot thought what he thinks about this guy personally. It's like spiritual. when you would fight Holyfield, did you have to go in there and hate him? Oh, that's how you make great fights. Yeah. And that's why the fight game maybe isn't yeah. so great now. These guys don't have this fucking no, anger. That, that anger. They want, they want to get their money and not get hurt. You have to right. get hurt right. for money. But yeah. <laughs> even that's so, that's I why used I to try. That's why I learned to fight an unwritten rule. Not now, but when you um, sign that contract, there's always a possibility that you can die during the training and during the fight. It's unwritten, but you know that. You've seen it happen. Right. With people you know and people you didn't know. So you know those are the possibilities. And guys today just want to get out and get their money and yeah. get the hell home. But it's, it's, it's like a business. Yeah, it's no, free, it's no free meal here. You have to bleed for that food.